Hey guys, it's Drew with Gucci Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a coin shop, giving my personal review of it, and uh, the reason why I'm a little bit angry right now. But let's get this video started. So when you go into a coin shop, you know, you want to be, uh, feel like you're important, feel like you are involved, you know, you know, try to be a friend of these coin shop people, right? You try to be a friend of the dealer, you try to get great coins, you try to pay your bills, right, if you're a coin dealer. And so we went into Cameo Coins and Collectibles in Fairfax, Virginia, or Vienna, wherever it is. Um, and so that when you go up to a normal coin shop, they normally have a buzzer, buzzes you in, you know, safety stuff, right? Well, they had their, their, their shop door wide open, okay? Me and Casey, we parked out front, and we normally carry our inventory, you know, with us sometimes when we're traveling. So Casey has to stay out in the car, make sure he has his whole puncher ready in case anything happens. I went in, they had a whole case full of collector coins, and um, and so, you know, I was, I, was, I was interested, right? You know, if, you're, if your money's green, it should be able to buy you a coin because you have the same amount of money as everybody else. If a coin's $1,600 and you come with $1,600 and you wanna buy that coin, it should be made available to you, right? Well, wrong, wrong. For this coin shop, wrong. So basically, I went to the shop and I started you know, asking them questions about certain coins, picking things up, and uh, the coin dealer started to get very agitated, started to walk around, ask us, well, he looked outside. It's a, well, by the way, we're driving like a 2008 Toyota Prius. It's white, uh, it's right outside his door with our, our license plate. So he said, what are you doing here from Texas? So he's asking us, and I'm like, oh, that's just normal, you know? And uh, I guess we're, I said, we're, you know, in here traveling for, and visiting family and stuff. And so he's like, okay, okay. And so they're, they're all walking around with, uh, they're all walking around with hole punchers on their hips, you know? And they're walking around and they're kind of pacing back and forth. And you know, I'm asking about these coins, right? And I pick one up and uh, you know, he's like, oh, I won't, I'm not selling you that one. I won't, I won't, I won't let you buy that one. No, 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 that one's not for sale. You can't buy that. And I, it was kind of strange because it's like, once again, if you're going into a coin shop, isn't everything for sale? And then he basically said, well, you can't come in here and be a dealer and buy all my collector coins and you can't, uh, you know, it, it was very, like, very demeaning, very, they, they basically were just trying to push you out. They didn't want you to have any type of business in their shop. And a big reason for that is because, say I sell, one, I bought a few coins from him actually, which I got lucky. But say, you know, someone comes in the shop and buys this from him, right? This 1961 seated half, VF 35. Say that I buy that from him and he's, and they're just novice collectors. Well, if you know anything about Fairfax, basically it's a pretty expensive area. I mean, there's a lot of government officials that probably live around there and so, what I would say is this this coin shop has an in to all those people because they sell to them for so many years. They don't want to work with dealers. They don't want nothing to do with dealers. Because why? At the end of the day, if there are a coin shop that only serves collectors, even if it's for great prices like these, they're going to be able to get into those homes, buy those big collections back, um, you know, for for cheap. And so, you know, uh, basically I was asking more about collector coins. He was letting me buy some and then not others and then you know, he's throwing F-bombs and you should go to the other effing shop and let them effing sell you all their effing collector coins, basically. And then, so he, you know, once everything, I, I really felt uncomfortable after a while because it was like, uh, it, there was no calmness in the air. It was very anxious and tense and on edge. And uh, so at, at the end of the time, at the end of buying and selling everything, you know, we wanted to buy a few coins. We ended up buying a few coins, thankfully. I'm gonna show them to you here in a minute. Uh, he basically came up to us again, and he was like, just to let you guys know what you're doing is effing sketchy. Yeah, it's, it's effing sketchy. And then I basically dismantled the argument in about 0.5 seconds, right? So I walked into the coin shop, once again, what we're talking about, we got six people with hole punchers on their arms, or on their hips, right? Um, I left the car right in plain view so they can get my license plate number, and they have cameras everywhere, right? So I'm not wearing a mask. And, uh, you know, and basically I started asking about coins and asking what gray sheet was. So in about 
45 seconds of me walking into the shop, they knew that I wasn't someone casing the shop and I was a dealer. And once again, it just goes back to, to say, it's like if I ever own a shop or Casey and I ever own a shop, when if someone comes in and they have money to buy something, I don't understand why it's, why it's my prerogative to tell them what they can and can't buy if it's literally out in the case, like we're at a grocery store. And so uh, Fairfax was, you know, this, this cameo coins and collectibles, uh, it's something that even if I made money at, I would never want to go back to. It's just, you feel horrible after leaving that place. And um, they have great reviews, by the way. Their reviews are like 4.5 out of five and everyone loves them and this and that. But if they make somebody like me feel bad that way, it's just, it's not gonna work. Um, but uh, when I was talking to him about it too, he was bragging about all these collect all these dealers that came in. Oh, I got this dealer coming in from there, and then he came in a few days ago, and he came in a few days ago, and they bought all this stuff. And then as soon as I walk in, they go, "Oh, well, you're a dealer. You can't buy from me." So, but I'm gonna show you a few coins that we bought. Uh, this is a 1916 D Mercury dime graded uh, VG8 by PCGS. It's a nice coin. I thought it was interesting, and I thought I could make a few, maybe a hundred bucks on it. Something I got away with, something I got to buy, woo! But, uh, you know, it's a decent coin. I'm sure they run through a lot there, and so, just a very odd experience. But, once again, the 1861 seated half. I thought it was nice and original, so, wanted to pick it up, you know? And, uh, a few other things here. This is the 44S Walker. This one's great, MS64 by PCGS. Uh, you know, just has some Tony on the reverse, but nothing too crazy. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to rip everything out of their shop and take it from them. I just wanted a few coins, um, and so here, here's another 1861, but it's a three cent silver. That's great, AU53 by PCGS. A little bit harder for Casey to pick up on, which is okay. But all of our photos will be on AcousticCollectibles.com if you want to take a look at them. But uh, you know, at the end of the day. I don't know. I feel like at the end of the day, I want to work with everybody. I want to, I want to be a supporter of everybody, right? If so, if a dealer came into my shop or a collector came into my shop, I want to, I want a significant price on some stuff. But at the end of the day, I think it's it's good to treat everybody fairly, have some good bedside manner. Um, also, even if you don't agree with some shop, sometime locally to you. So there's a guy down the street. His name was uh, what was it? Penny Pinchers Coins and Collectibles. He, he, the guy was basically talking crap about the competition to right to my face. And I'm like, man, I should go see those people. They sound like great people. So sometimes it's like, I want to change the game to where everybody feels important and welcome. And um, we all have to make money. We all have to f eat. We all have to, you know, and so I, we took a trip up here to do other things and try to figure out something. But when you boil it down to it, it's like, I want to see everybody eat. I want to be people's friend that are of good integrity, that have money, that want to buy stuff. And my goal is to never treat somebody that way, never make them feel less than. And um, yeah, I, if I were to give this rating out of 10, once again, I said I would never go back to that shop. It's just, uh, it's just not worth it. But a rating out of 10, I'd give it like a one out of, one out of 10 or one out of five, whatever we would give it. It's just, I don't know. Like I said, you can make money, but you don't want to feel like a dog at the end of the day. And I wouldn't do, you know, I've been in similar shops like this and I've never felt good leaving those shops. And I've figured out other ways to make myself and Casey money to sustain ourselves with people that wanted to work with us and wanted to be our friend. At the end of the day, it's not all about the business to where, you know, I got to get the best people in here that are going to give me the most money and they're going to sell my sell us their collection one day. At the end of the day, sometimes you're just saying, you're a good person, I'm a good person, let's work together. And you'll do well if you're willing to do that and not do well if you're treating somebody else differently than somebody else that, that would come into your shop with more money. Um, when we started, a little bit of backstory on us, when we started selling on Instagram and Facebook and all that, people said, oh, you're, you're 22 years old, what are you doing? Um, you know, we had kids that are similar to our age, you have no money, where does your money come from? Um, you don't know how to grade coins, why'd you buy that coin? And after a while, those people you know, either disappeared or they said, you know what, this kid's a good kid, Casey's a good guy too, there's no reason for us to beat up on what they want to do and how they want to kind of expand the coin hobby and make people more interested in it. And so, be a good person 
and be kind to people and want to be, have, do the best for the hobby and you'll end up reaping a reward. Only have your shop and your, you're on edge about everything and you're treating people differently than other people and all you have is money in your shop, you're gonna be an unfulfilled and person that just may not see the best in life. And so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this coin shop review. I know it's something off the wall, but it's just something I had to get off my chest. I mean, we were there like two hours ago and I, uh, but make sure to comment your thoughts on this. Have you guys ever walked into a shop where they weren't collector friendly, but they were only coin dealer friendly? Um, and subscribe if you're new. I mean, we're trying to come out with videos every single week, talking about coin shops, talking about our experiences. This one wasn't a good one, but it was definitely something to take note of not to do and to be a good dealer. But we will see you guys in the next video. And I wanted to tell you this, this review of this coin shop is my opinion and what I felt about the place. And, um, you know, what I would say if you wanted to see it for yourself is go in there and see what happens. I don't want to push anyone away from this business. I just say my personal experience, what happened, how I was treated, and you do what you want with the rest.